Uh, good evening. My name is, is, is Chris Pettit. Um, I suppose I'm here because um, Pedro and I have, have a cameraman in common. In fact, the first time we had contact with each other was he wrote me a letter because he wanted Martin Schaefer to um, shoot his first film, which Martin did. And um, I think the first, I mean, the first question is really, are, are you here for Pedro or are you here for the Straubs? I mean, it's a, what a turnout. Um, but when I was watching the film, I kept on wondering, you had the door open to the cutting room. Was it, was it very difficult to get them to agree to uh, have the door open to the cutting room? No, I was, the problem was seeing the, the door because I never saw, I saw the door the, probably the third or fourth day of shooting. It's so stupid. Filmmakers are stupid. No, we are. <coughs> we never see things in front of us. And um, I knew a little bit Jean-Marie I knew the, I knew them a little bit, not as after the film, of course, but so I knew he was um, what he is. He's, he walks. He's never. He doesn't stand still. It's, so I knew. <coughs> I expected when I proposed, I'm going to try and shoot this moment of editing, which is always a bit well supposed to be in the dark. Concentration, patience. Um, I expected. I, I was curious of how how is Jean Marie in, a, in an editing room. So uh, it's not a surprise that he's always in movement and he needs it. He needs fresh air. He needs um, he needs to smoke. He needs so um, so he. There was this movement which was very s essential for this film. But the door, yeah, so the door, um, I was there, I did the camera, I had a friend who did the sound. And we spent three, the first three days, um, I'm, I was trying to find my place, of course, and I moved all over the place, except I couldn't go in front of, pass beyond the the line of uh, the frontier of Danielle, because she wouldn't let me, and she told me, just don't bother me, don't come close, I'm not, she said, I'm not a horse, <laughs> so don't come over me, and as you see, she's, she's, uh, she needs her, uh, uh, so, so that I knew, and I was respectful, and etc. Et we didn't have lights, no equipment. So everything that you see is what you see. I mean, the lights is the light, the working light on the the table, the editing table. The other light is for Jean-Marie. And uh, but yeah, the first three days were torture. It was completely for me and for my friend who did the sun because he was also very very. Anxious, he didn't know exactly how to do. Everything was documentary. I mean, the conditions were surprise, 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 surprise. Not, nothing was... We didn't know what was going to happen. And, of course, this this uh, bonus, this bonus of Straub going in and out was great, but uh, and talking. But the problem was we never knew when he would get up or go away. Usually after she did the cut, he would go out, open the door, and so we had this view over something. <coughs> but the first three days were torture, and there is a, actually, a, it's a bit boring and technical, but, um, but it's fascinating. I, st I, I did absolutely everything wrong the first three days, just shots like this, never, I was never still, and the guy with the sound was a bit lost. But at least the sound captured something. We understood what they said. And then editing my film, this film, my idea was I'm going to do chronological. And we're going from shot one to shot the last. Uh, the problem was the first days, 
the sequence of the guy with the oranges in the port, in the arbor. I did not have that. I mean, as I had a shamble something. So, <clears throat> fortunately, the last day or one day after when they finished the, the editing of Sicilia, I unconsciously, a little bit like that, I asked Danielle to shoot every shot. Uh, so I had um, a rough, all of the shots of Sicilia. And what I did, if you, I don't know if you can understand this, what we did with these new means, m m uh, tools of editing that now we all have, Final Cut, I think this was Avid, but it's the same thing, computers, etc. What we did, well, my friend who did the editing, was guided by the sound that we had, so the voices, when she says, mm, not here, probably here, yeah, uh -huh. And the machine going f back and forth. We just try to put the image and do back and forth digitally to synchronize with the voices. So what you saw for the se first sequence is completely manipulated. It's so this to say the door was fantastic. It's another screen. And that this, this film is completely opposite to Straub's method. It's the most manipulative. You have been cheated, my friends. Absolutely. It's, uh, and you probably liked it <laughs> as Straub, <laughs> because um, he never, they thought it was, uh, well, all the rest was, was okay. The, as soon as I found out about the, the door, and well, I found my, my place. And then it was a simple, very comfortable place. Like I'm always like that, a cat. I just put myself there and I don't move and I just try to be... And, and did they show any curiosity about the uh, technology you were using? Because... Uh <laughs> um. Yeah, well, I think you know, you know a little bit of when they were... Yeah, back in the 70s, 80s and everything, they were purists and everybody talked about them as being almost Martians, <laughs> Marxist, Leninist, Maoist, materialist, everything. So <clears throat> I was a little bit afraid mm, of everything, of doing the film, of course, because I... My idea was to, to make, to, to do justice in some other way, I told this the other day because w we were talking in university. We talked a little bit about this film. And this, <coughs> I wanted to do a film from a little bit from the point of view of the fanatic, of the rock and roll fanatic almost, because that's what they were for me. When I was in the 70s, uh, well, 80s, approaching my filmmaking birth, what I heard, the 80s, you know what it was, I mean, I, I liked uh, those very fast and aggressive bands, and, and what I saw was this and Godard, that's what I liked it, really. Well, there was the American classic cinema, but the modern things were this, and fa of, uh, something as good, as fast as clever, as funny, as sexy as Wire, the band Wire, I don't know if you know, was Traum, completely the same thing. Uh, so I wanted to do this kind of film, make justice to this kind of feeling, mm, saying these guys are sexy, sensual, they are not the materialistic, uh, boring guys that you have read in hundreds of bad essays and that really worked against them because a lot of things written about Straub were um, turned were um, were bad were um, and some not true at all and just um so that's what i wanted and um <coughs> but i was a bit afraid of course because they are not approachable like 
that and and they told me we don't want to leave traces we don't uh, this was possible because um, especially one person, Janine Bazin, who was the wife, widow of André Bazin, and you all probably have heard the name, and she was the director, founder of the series of this Filmmakers of Our Time series. She the Straub, Straub, uh, Daniel and Jean-Marie respected a lot uh, Janine. André Labart, she's a partner, uh, critic from the old, old Cahier du Cinéma from the 60s, uh, was a friend of Jean-Marie also. And I had a very good introduction to this film. To the, I <coughs> had met uh briefly once or twice Jacques Rivette <coughs> because he liked my first film and then the second film and he wrote me a letter and I wrote him a letter and Rivette is that kind of guy is like he, li he like he sees everything even to today is a bit ill and more confined too but he, he usually saw everything everything that was released in Paris so and he liked talking about films, and very secret guy, but very generous. And I had these two dinners with him, and he was very kind, and he is perhaps the person in the world that Jean-Marie Straubm respects the most, Rivet, because of his writings, because of what he's done, done. Um, and so Rivet told Straub, listen, this guy is okay. And what he does with digital, because this was when I made In Vanda's Room, which was a film and video alone. And, and what he did with this film is quite interesting. So don't be afraid of this small camera. And so they weren't, they, they were not curious. I mean, Daniela, I sense she was always like this, looking like this. And, but well, <clears throat> and Straub was what he is really. It was it was a toy for him. I think he was. But I think the third, fourth, fifth day, I think they must have felt that we were so 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 serious about our jobs, me and the sound guy. That the fifth day they he used to go down because what you see is not true. Huh? When he went away, sometimes there's one hour. He goes down, smokes a cigarette, drinks two whiskeys, buys two sandwiches for me and for my partner, and comes back. But this is condensed, <laughs> very condensed again. So, so I think they felt that the film was very um, respectful or serious. And we were really trying our best, especially me, because I was trying to, I had to sh film them working, I mean, physically, their bodies, I mean, their presence, in, and uh, the film, because what you s most of what you see is shot with the same camera fr from the screen and uh, the editing table that you see. So I had to be a bit fast, and, uh, and I couldn't approach physically me, so I had to zoom and something I don't like, so it has another quality, and it's technically it was a nightmare. So we went every day at 6 or 7 o'clock in the evening. We were dead, dead completely. And does she address him in the f with the formal you? She, <coughs> she always, um, I don't know, in English, how do you, it's vous. Yeah. No, no, she... Uh, the only time she says, or in this film and in life, she said, uh, she, she used to say, you was the insult. <laughs> Fuck you. Well, so, tais-toi uh, or shut up. Uh, all the insults are you. Uh, there's no insults in vous. Once I heard him in a thing like this saying, somebody asked, why do you treat you, you and your wife? And he said, uh, I was, I was educated this way in, in uh, where I lived in uh, 
st uh, near Strasbourg, so north north of France, near Germany. We used to. I never called. I never. I used to address my father, my family like this, and so when I met her, I was like this. Um, so, yeah. And I think the other thing that struck me about the film is that that. Um, I mean, editing now has become such a different process uh, that with, with um, I think especially in, in, in television, it's become, you barely see a cut anymore on television. Everything, it, it's, it's become a kind of keyboard skill and, and because it's much quicker now, television barely amounts to more than assembly. So to, to, to see this level of argument over, over one or two frames is, is like watching a piece of kind of deep uh, kind of archaeology. Yeah, <coughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I've been having experiences with this film. Very funny. Some very funny, some very sad, <laughs> because people, yeah, some things, objects that they even don't recognize anymore, like this funny... I don't know where, but somebody talked about um, this television with handles. Mm -hmm. Really? And some, t yeah, well. No, but what you say is that um, there was a time when this kind of work, well, for us, as the f that, what was the name of that film? Any or song, Anything Goes. It's not like that. Uh, it's not like that in editing or in life. You have to be careful because it's not like anything goes. It's, it's difficult and they had this complication because they were, as they say in the film, and we both know that, they were probably the only filmmakers in the world at this time um, to work with image and one sound, I mean one track. They never used two tracks, I mean two uh, tracks of sound. Yeah. So you have to cut both at the same time because just to give you an example of something that is not in the film but should have been because it was not. But well, I have lots of things that could have been and are not. One afternoon, Daniel was cutting one, um, I think it's the pan, long pan uh, that goes from the cemetery to the village, and you see almost all the island. <coughs> On the mist, there's a little mist, and you see this pan, 360 degrees almost. And she was cutting this, and she wanted to cut at the moment where there was a bird singing. There was a bird in the distance, but very, very faint. I mean, you see how it was, the conditions. We edited with this machine working, the, the motor. The so it was very, very faint. Just beep, beep. And she spent, I don't know, 15 minutes just going. And Straub was a bit annoyed, as always, saying, what are you doing? When and she said, shut up, I have to, I don't want to kill the bird. And really she didn't want to, uh, she couldn't cut the image because she didn't want to assassinate the bird, <laughs> murder the bird. And then somebody said, I don't know, one of us said, yeah, well, this, this is, you go to extremes with this kind of, and she said, I think, she said it, or Jean-Marie, I don't remember, she said, yes, yeah, because if we cut the bird, then it's the beginning of barbaric thought. <laughs> or then you can do everything you want, and we, we have to respect certain things. So you see, it's a very different kind of <laughs> job. I mean, if, uh, nobody uh, cuts image because of a sound. I mean, it's very rare. It's very rare. I mean, and people who say they did are li probably lying. Images, it's the beauty of the image or the actor or movement or the actors in the scene or that, 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 that makes the cut. I mean, you, you get to the cut because of the image, not because of the sound. And, 
And sometimes, as you see, it's, it's the sound. Or, or both, even, which would be better. And no, and no script, no continuity. Uh, no, um, I have to say I've never been in the, in the shooting by them. I, then I was in the preparation of the follow the film they did f after. <coughs> they had, um, yeah, they had um, Daniel used I think used to be in charge when shooting of yeah well wardrobe. Mm -hmm. uh, and mainly, yeah, continuity. I mean, they had the text uh, prepared with the actors and the pauses, the the metrics, how they, the metrics, how they they call it, the metrics. Um, and she used to be the one who <coughs> listens to the the sound with headphones mm -hmm. to be sure that everything was okay. So she was in with the sound and well, the decoupage. And you said, see if the shot was, and Jean Marie was well doing what normally the director does and in a classical sense. But um, but here in the editing room, uh, yeah, it's what you see. It's mm, there's nothing else. Uh. Yeah, because I think it was Godard who said that hair and makeup were the two biggest battles of cinema. That um, perhaps you should open the. Um Questions up. I don't know if anyone has any questions. But, um. <coughs> I was going to say, um, Straub and Julier talk a lot about Brecht in relation to their cinema, and I was wondering um, where you thought your work fit in with Brecht's, or if his writings, or if they're of interest to your cinema. I've not. I'm not in. To be honest, I've not. Um, I don't know Brecht as well as they seem to. Um, I've read some things, a lot of plays, are, and um, I've enjoyed reading his diaries or, I don't know, journals, how they call it, work journals, which are very, very uh, interesting. And, um, Yes, but it's a, it's a difficult discussion to have in this kind of place, no? in this kind of situation. What I've been most, uh, if I could, it's easy, it would be easy to say, yeah, yeah, Brecht, because I work with this kind of people. If you saw my films, it's very easy to name the name Brecht and perhaps other stuff, because these people are not actors, the, the, the people I work with, they have a, cert a certain kind of naivete, blankness, um, they don't have a relation with cinema like, not even an actor, um, they, don't, they don't care. So there's another, they don't have that fear of, they can expose themselves in another way um, there's lots of things from, so it would be easy. But what I'm most, I'm following Brecht, from what I know, more on the side of of the of, of production, production. In the sense that uh, when he said, um, when he was always saying, the work you have to do is on the production side, not on the artistic side. That will come after, if you're lucky. Um, try to try to make possible the conditions to make your film the most just, mm, most reasonable and poetic and etc. And those conditions are take care of your money, take care of the money well, be a bit democratic, be a bit just, make justice. I mean, so there's this famous quote that I like a lot from Brecht saying, all the sleepless nights I've had was thinking about the production side of things and not the artistic side of things. That I've always felt as... Because I've abandoned a lot of things, producers, uh, makeup... Uh, Tool sheets. 
Yeah, Kolsch, I was not made for that. I was, not, I was not made for that. I've told them this in the university because the... No, it's this feeling of, you know, you know it. Um, we have these lives, normal lives. And then when we are filmmakers, every three years or four, we have this guy who comes to our house with a car. <laughs> no? It's very strange. He's, hi, how are you? It's great. The sun is shining and... And he makes this small talk and chit chat and seems to say everything is okay and um <clears throat> it will be fine today. The scene is wonderful, they're expecting you. And then you arrive, you go to the set and they ask you normally it's do you want chicken or mm -hmm. something else? And then where do you want the camera? And <clears throat> It's a very strange situation to have that for five weeks, a chauffeur, you're the boss, but in my normal, and then it ends, and you're nobody again. <laughs> and I said, no, this is not a life for me. I, I don't, um, perhaps if it was every day, and some of them. <laughs> no, yeah, that's what filmmakers are, some of them. I mean, Almodovar uh, here, a lot of them, they have personal assistants to Mr. That's what you see in the credits. Hmm. Personal assistant to Mr. Yeah, I had the second film I made, I counted 50 cars in the drive. <laughs> and, and, and the fact that I had the time to count them uh, told me that something was wrong. <laughs> and then, as you say, you go on the set and they say, where do you want the camera? And when I was working for the BBC, it would be, where do you want the camera, sir? So uh, for, for f yeah five weeks you're addressed as sir. So yeah, well. Are there any other questions? But these kinds of these kind of things are chosen for us. I don't even have to choose not to have chauffeurs, and the, the world chooses for me, and I'm what I am now. So. So I mean, I have the question I would ask is really, given that on the one hand everything has changed very radically, in that the, the technology makes everything much more available to us, but at the same time everything has become much more conservative in terms of finding money or, or the rest of it. So therefore, I mean, it's going to change at some point. But but therefore, how do you? I mean, what would be your ideal setup in terms of of, of being able to make films? One a year and a chauffeur. Now my concern is that I've, I've uh, it's a bit too, I, um, a bit too private, even not private, but my concern is for if the people I'm working are well enough, because this this uh, crisis, as they say, has affected us all. Not only is this joke about chauffeurs, it's more or less a joke, but I'm working with people for the last years and the film I'm doing now with people that are not well. Um, they don't have money, they don't have money to pay the rent, they don't know how to pay the rent next month, they, they are suffering from a lot of uh, health problems even, they are getting old, pensions, stuff, a lot of problems, I mean the normal, usual problems. And uh, and that's my main concern. It's not uh, so. The films depend on a lot of things like that, like this. Uh, so that's my my concern right now. I've been doing this film for a long time because of this, because one actor is not well, and then the other <coughs> uh, disappears a little bit because he has to go work on something, of course, and I cannot pay them not at all what they pay in movies. I pay what we pay in real life, I mean, normal jobs. And in my country, it's very, very low. So, um, but I would say that if I can get over this or if everything goes a little bit well in a few months that will come, I would like to, to have the amount of money to do something for, I think I need a year to make it, to shoot. Mm -hmm. 
When I say shoot, it's not every day. Uh, um, not at all. I think I think we shoot the films in four, five, six months. So really, every day, Saturday. But then there are four, five, six months that we are just <sighs> talking, thinking, drinking, walking, doing normal stuff. Or going to the pharmacy, going to the foreign office, going to doing this kind of things, because we do them at the same time. But I would, I would like to do that, and I have the unit, the crew, to do this. Uh, I have three people that also like to do this this kind of way. We need just this camera. We're changing the camera because now it's film, it's a new camera, and it goes from uh, HD to HD something, and now it's 2K, and etc. So every two years, three years, there's a new camera, so but um, it's always a camera that I can uh, uh, operate. Uh, it's becoming so, so computer that it's mm, not even that much fun now. It's You do it. Uh, but, well, and um, yeah, it's camera sound, um, two, three people, and <coughs> now even the actors work a little bit as I mean if it's what I say if we are hungry hungry to eat the first one will say uh, I'm, I'm a little bit hungry let's go and we stop if not so there's no um, and then showing the films but that that's something else uh, that's I think I can still go on making them like this I don't know, for a while. Showing them, I don't know. I don't know. If this film that I'm making turns out like I think, I don't know. No, I think one festival or two, I think so. But I'm beginning to get responses. For instance, I made a short film that I was sent to Venice and it was refused. So it's not like that. I mean, refused. They never answered. So I'm not, uh, you know, it's not... Uh, I think it's changing the the, the guys who decide the, the you know you feel it the guys in TV are not the same I mean I used to know people here I mean, we used to know people in France and getting old people are going away retirement uh, and I think the new people with some exceptions are a little bit less I say in my spirit coming from my or perhaps they don't like what we like, or they think people need other stuff, and things are what they are, I don't know. I've never worked really for TV, so this is the only... And I have to tell you, this experience was not uh, heaven, far from it, uh, with, with, uh, with, uh, with, with the producers from the series, yes. I mean, Janine Bazin and the people I've told you, but the, the guys from... Arte, the French, that uh, German TV. It's very, very, very difficult. I could tell you. I will tell you. <laughs> there is a moment when Jean-Marie says something about Cassavetes and Woody Allen. You remember. So I was approached. Uh, I was lucky because Janine Bazin was by my side that day. She was in the editing room, my room, with me. And it was so dark that I think the guy from the, the general manager or something didn't see she was there. She was very small. But she was there was a little bit. She, no, it was really dark. And she, he, he said, uh, this scene here, we have a problem with this. Because, you know, Cassavetes is Cassavetes, and when Strauss says that Cassavetes... And, and I tried to explain, but listen, he's not saying that he doesn't like or the films of Cassavetes are bad. He's just saying that he works in another kind of psychology. I mean, he's saying that psychology comes from editing, from the cut, <laughs> that you can make the bad guy even worse, cutting two more frames. That's what he's saying. 
And he's saying that the actors in his films are a bit more um, uh, abstract. There is a way of, <clears throat> it's another kind of acting. And so I went on and on. And he said, yes, but it's so unkind of him to say, uh, because... <clears throat> so I said, no, of course, I will not cut this, because it's not, it's Strauss' opinion. I mean, it's his, I will not do that. And so that was the first clash. He let it go. But then, the, at the end, when I had my, I think, this version completed, they came again, and now that there were two, uh, just to tell you that Janine Bazan, that he didn't saw, it, said, uh, no, 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 we will not take that out. Jean-Marie's, everything that he says will be there if if I want. So she said, no, 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 go away, please. And he went away, so she she had a lot of influence. But when she was not there the last days, and when they saw the film, really they said, um, I th we think this is the most, uh, boring film of the series. <laughs> Literally, they said it. The word in French is a bit more gentle, but it's boring. Um, uh, it seemed funny at the beginning. This man, th they had no idea who Straub was, huh? but n no idea, absolutely. So when they saw the first flashes of film, and you know, they pass by and I was editing and they say, hey, whoa, what, a, hey, that guy is, whoa, it must be fun, because they see him shout and with a cigar. <coughs> when they saw the film, said, it's not even interesting what he's saying, it's boring, and we don't uh, think we can have a film so dark in, in these four walls. You have to go outside, you have to do a scene outside. And I was completely stunned because I said, what do you mean? What kind of scene? I mean, so, uh, girls in bicycles or what? <laughs> I said, we cannot. Uh, it's a question of light and TV. It doesn't work like this. It's going to be too dark. People will not stand this. And it's too claustrophobic or too dark, too closed. I said, I don't, I'm sorry. I have no idea. So, And again, Janine Bazin saved me, I mean saved me, said, you are crazy. So, just to say that um, it was not easy. What I mean is, it was never easy, and that was not bad. <laughs> uh, the, the other day, I, I like Strap so much, so much, like I did bands or rock bands, certain rock, Wire especially, because they never cheated to a certain point. They never really cheated it. They did it like they did, and, and the rest is... And, um, and Straub went to a, really to a limit, to a, perhaps too far, as I said the other day. Perhaps he was in this kind of prison, a bit too far for, for him, for his life, for but, but he's... I don't know. It's, it's interesting what you were saying about um, sort of Strauss reputation because Ma Martin Muller, who was the sound recordist on Radio On and worked with Martin Schaefer, um, he became a sound recordist because of Straub. And there was a point where he and another admirer went to Straub and as a gift gave him a Rolling Stones record. <laughs> what happened after that has never been revealed, but whether he ever played it or but but I th it was quite interesting what you were saying about the kind of the the crossover between the two i don't know is, does anyone have any more questions because we should probably move to a close quite soon There's one at the back and then uh, just. Hi, um, I was wondering if observing this editing process um, so closely, had any impact on how you approached editing in your subsequent films? No, it's always the same thing. Uh, this was this was um, a bit different because because of this. Um, uh, 
I told you, I had imagined, uh, it's difficult to talk about this here and this, you know, talking about the work, how do you do that? And uh, it's very, very difficult to talk. We, we need uh, the screen, I uh, should have the DVD, and I would, if you sit here, I would, it would be much more clear. But imagine that um, you have this 100 or 80 hours of this um, almost seminar. I mean, this editing of Sicilia. I shot this, I had these hours, and then I want to do a film I, I want. They allowed me two hours, uh, one hour and 40, I think. So I had to do the film, this, uh, compress this to one hour and a half or something. Um, <clears throat> And then I had in my mind the spirit, this thing that I almost revenge, you know, I was furious. I have to make this kind of film that everybody will understand who they are and, uh, and turn around the thing and like them. People who don't like them could perhaps start to admire or give an idea of what their films are a little bit of what they think about films and uh, see how is editing, how, how people edit the film. I mean, what's, what's this strange work? So I had to do everything through editing with uh, these new machines, this new uh, Final Cut thing. That really permits a lot of stuff. I think this film would, would not be possible if it was um, made traditionally. Or perhaps I would be still editing. Uh, because we... I would have to show you and give you example, but examples, but most of the times when... Sometimes you can feel it perhaps, and it's not bad. When Straub goes in the, in the hallway, when he goes away, he doesn't say anything. I'm putting stuff there because I thought he must say that now. It's really great if he says uh, Kafka something or behind the wall, you know. It's really the right moment for him to say this. So it's like an encyclopedic work, you know, archival. I, kn I knew him so well, him and her, I that I could go get this thing about something and put it there and organize it so that it would be coherent. I mean, so not very s incoherent. It made sense a little bit. And um, almost, you know, organizing a sequence around acting or actors. And there is one when they talk about the German theater that they played. They went to see an actor with a piano. don't know if you remember. Went to their house to practice, and they were very, really impressed with this guy. There was nothing there. He was just walking. You just don't see their mouth. And with these new technologies, you can do this kind of manipulation. Jean-Marie never knew this. Of course, I've been in a number of situations with him like this, with the film, with this film. And we talk about this. I think he never, he doesn't believe it still. That he doesn't speak in that shot. Uh, it's something strange, but uh, there's a lot of twists and tricks in this film. Not only the image, the sound, the, there's effects, dissolves in, in, in the, the screen. Uh, I changed the image of the screen uh, in Danielle's uh, table. Uh, she's... I don't, don't remember now the sequence, but there is a sequence. Ah, yeah. She's um, carrying the, the cans, and there is an image. There was an image of uh, something there, or nothing, and I decided to put there um, the image of Silvestro, the guy, the actor in Sicilia with the white shirt. So we put it there just by uh, an effect. In the old days, it would be very expensive and very, you know, to put that uh, because she passes in front and it's, it's because it made sense because it's they are in that sequence, but what I shot had had nothing. So 
I mean, it has lots of things. So the film is very special in terms of it has a lot of tricks. For for the editor was really a um, lot of work and it's fun, but a lot of work. Finding all this, it seems very easy, but <laughs> it's not. I'm telling you like this, but it was one year and a half, I think, every day. Phew, Really, with the Arte guys behind me all the time, so it was very, very. But the problems remained the same: I mean, where to cut, <laughs> well, how, where. That never changes. I mean, it's even in this film. Okay, there's one more question down. Yeah, it was. Um, uh, it was just uh, what was their uh, reaction when they saw it first time? Uh, no, it, yeah, they liked the film very much. Yeah, they saw it in the first time we showed it in um, a film festival in Torino, in Italy, where they had a retrospective complete. It was a very f <laughs> the cinema caught fire. And I'm not kidding. If you go to internet, go see it, Torino. Uh, what was the year? Two thousand and one, two, three. If you search, there's a probability that was Straub with a cigar. That <laughs> there is a slight probability. There's even in the newspaper they said it. Signor Straub probabilmente con suo Toscano, <laughs> because he had that uh, Toscano. It was already the time where you couldn't be, and he was always. It was uh, not lit, and but. But uh, actually, the cinema caught fire, but it burned completely. After all of the <laughs> screen, there was no more screenings. It was the last day. And we sh screened uh, this film for the first time in that festival. Um, I was very scared, of course. Uh, but they liked it very much, especially Daniel, I think. Well, Jean-Marie also, but Daniel was very... <coughs> She, after dinner, and then we went to dinner, and she said, this guy is really uh, cabota. I don't know the word in French. Like a bad actor. Uh, a theater actor who overacts. There's a word in French, cabota. I don't know if they're in English. And she said, this, this guy is really too much. He's always overacting. <laughs> <coughs> But uh, yeah, they, they, they did like, and they were very surprised, especially Danielle, because then we talked a lot about that. She was very surprised with the small camera, what, it, what, what we had done with that. And as I told you before, it seemed the perfect instrument to do this kind of thing. Uh, it was a bit irrational when I proposed to do a film about the editing, but um, it turned out that it's, this machine was perhaps done, uh, made to do these kind of things, very small things like uh, insect <laughs> documentaries. On uh, uh, it's a little bit. I see a lot of parallel with uh, the film that Godard made about the uh, history of cinema. There's a lot of things that he does in other ways. With digital, himself alone in his house, with his manipulation, has to do a lot with what is done in this film too, in another way, talking about cinema. So but these two films for me are, work very well together, I think. But the thing, the thing with the Goddard is he was still using the old VHS system, so it was everything was um, still linear. Um, yeah, which yeah. is, I mean, uh, yeah. 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 that's true. Phenomenal um, yeah. amount of work. <coughs> but but uh, um, we have maybe time for one more question, and then we should. Yeah, she she um, 
She died six, I'm not sure, six or seven years perhaps ago. Oh no, she was, uh, yeah, 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 it's, you're right. Um, no, it's just, uh, everything we shot was in the editing room, but the editing work. We got there at 10, when they were there, at 10 o'clock in the morning, small pause for lunch. Um, two o'clock from one to two, two to five, five thirty, and then I remember shooting um, some stuff. This took place in a school, of art school in France called uh, Le Frenois, which is uh, in the north, Lille. And it's a, f a school that, uh, art school has, they have film, dance, theater, everything. Strop hated the place. I hated the Everybody hated the place. I think even the students hate the place. It's a very modern, super modern school. Works with cards, the doors, the never, nothing works. You know, it's like Tati. You put the card and bam, makes a sound. They got stuck several times, you know, in the door. So it was very Tati seeing Jean Marie shouting on the other side, and you couldn't hear him, but you. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, I shot a little bit uh, in the booth projection, and you see that because there was a cinema where they uh, theater room where they sh sometimes showed the, their films for because they have uh, people went to see them um, at night. People from Lille, and it's not far from Paris; it's one hour by train, so. So they have these screenings with 12 guys. <laughs> you see them, eight sometimes, um, the church. <laughs> and uh, I shot them, and, and, they, and fortunately, because there was two great, great moments, one this long monologue where he talks about um, his life. So I shot a little bit in the booth with the, the projectionists preparing stuff. And I did this small moment when, uh, during a, a screening of one of their films. Uh, there was a screening, they were supposed to do this, a Q&A after, and I was there at the door with them while the film was running. I had my camera and I had my friend was, had the boom, the mic. And he, we were waiting and we shot that, the last shot. And um, what happened was that uh, we had coffee, we came up, I started the camera, they went into the shot, Danielle went over to the booth like always, because she was the one that took care of everything technical, and see if everything was right, etc. So she went there, That's, she disappears. And we stayed with him, waiting, and the camera was running. Actually, the shot before, it's very funny because there's more, uh, or before or after, because people come, uh, some running out, literally running out, so he goes s to spy on this thing, and he, he, he gets really scared, there's a moment, he gets really scared, he runs away to the, to the stairs, and comes back, and so there's... <coughs> But uh, so I shot that, and it seemed um, it seemed nice to just pass the feeling that this is really hard work, and people they are tired, and and, uh, and they were really tired, and it's a bit melancholic, yes, but uh, it seemed melancholically nice, <laughs> and. Um, you hear the sound of Sicilian, that's all the, the last Beethoven music that you hear in the film. It was not there, of course. I put it there because it was even more melancholic. But yes, it's um, every time we see it, it's, it brings back. <coughs> Thank you. 
Okay, there's one, one last question. The outtakes um, from this film went into six bagatelles. The six bagatelles, the outtakes from this yes. went into that, and there's that wonderful shot of them sitting under the laundry where she's sewing, and I just wondered if you could say something about that. I could, but How people haven't seen, seen that, it. perhaps. Yes, but I just... <laughs> No, that's that's something else. That's uh, I made so I made another a short film that I uh, shown the other day at this seminar I was doing. I made a small, small short film called Six Bagatelle, which is a musical piece. Well, a lot of musicians have this bagatelle, <coughs> um, and. It's six scenes that I had not included in this film. Because Danielle was very curious again. She asked me, did you get that? Why did you put that in the film? She remembered things that she in her head were great or good from when Jamari has this kind of brilliant uh, intuitions or uh, comes with something. Like so she's very, she wanted, didn't you catch when Jean-Marie said something? I said, yeah, yeah, but so white. So I told her, well, one day I'll do something else and with all the stuff. So I did for her a little bit this film, Six Bagatelle, which is six small scenes. One, the last one is the only one uh, in... Uh, say on plein air, uh, outside, but it's outside in Italy. It's made, it's shot sometime before, uh, after this. It's shot while they were already uh, preparing their next film, <laughs> which is a film called Workers' Peasants, which is the most commercial title in history, <laughs> as Jean-Marie says. <laughs> Workers, peasants. Um, so that was one year and something after this. I went to see them in Italy, just to vacation. It was summer. Just went to see them. And I took the camera. <coughs> and I don't know how we got a guy who made sound in Italy in that place. He came and we shot some things of the locations, just the locations where they were. It's a very nice place and um, I was doing that and one afternoon I had nothing to do and I again had the camera and they were like they were and I saw this, this seems nice. And so I framed and I sat and I, we were talking and drinking wine or something. And we had to go somewhere, that's why the shot is like it is. We knew it, it had an had to end at a certain point. And she says, stop, let's go, we have to go. We had to, we had to catch a train, we had to take somebody to a train. That's it. And um, yes, it was, was a friendly conversation and they talk, but it's difficult because people perhaps don't know. And It's a small film that, uh, yeah, it's not released, it's with the DVD I made, but uh, where Jean-Marie uh, talks a lot about his, a lot. Nine minutes, but nine minutes, very, very intense. What their life was, not compromising, making uh, uh, a film, a very expensive film, and then making a very small, cheap short, and then making another bigger and always quoting this thing that was capital for them, that thing that Nicholas Ray told uh, Buñuel that he repeats here, <coughs> that filmmaking is an awful business life because it's all about more, more and more. And they said it should be less and less, less not in a sense minimal, but less, more, less, with ups and downs, not like progressing into and um, and saying that he 
shares their, the convictions of their characters in Sicilia. That is, uh, he would give a lot of things just to be a part of human, the human community. He would give their what he possesses to be a part of a good human community. That's what he says, and I. Not bad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think we should um, probably end there. So, uh, Pedro Costa, thank you very much, and thank you for coming. Thank you.